What would you do if you stumbled upon hidden treasure? We're talking about hidden treasure this morning and how you can discover treasures hiding all around you. We also have music and encouraging message from John Bradshaw in a health segment from our friends at Loma Linda. Don't go anywhere. Good morning and happy Wednesday. Welcome to a new episode of Wake Up With Hope. Amen. We're so happy you're here and aren't you thankful for another day of life? I know I am. Yes. Every day is a great day to right the wrongs of yesterday. There is a most amazing promise found in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. It says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. God promises that if we confess our sins, he will forgive us and He will cleanse us. We can be made new in Him. Amen. That is truly an amazing promise, honey. You know, friends, is there anything lingering in your life from yesterday? If so, we invite you to confess your wrongs to God and to anyone that you may have wronged. Confess and make things right. Claim God's promise to forgive you and make you whole as you confess and stay close to Him. Amen. Because confession and repentance really brings hope in Jesus. And we can't wait to share more hope with you this morning. So why don't we begin by taking a look back at what took place in this day in history. On March 15, 1869, Cincinnati attorney Aaron Champion hired former cricket player Harry Wright to organize, manage, and play for the Cincinnati Red Stockings, who became the first professional baseball team. Of its impact, it was said, this did not just make the city famous, it made baseball famous. The start of this baseball team set the tone for other baseball teams to organize professionally. Hmm. You know, Jesus also set the tone for us as his followers when he organized the 12 disciples. You know, as we read about the disciples, one of the most encouraging things that we can take away from that is that they varied in personalities and, and dispositions. They all came from different backgrounds and, and some like James and John were referred to as sons of thunder because of their intense personalities. Even so, when they submitted into the moldings of Jesus, they, they were transformed and they were created into something beautiful. You know, the boastful Peter became humble. John became the gentle author of the epistle that most talks about love in the entire Bible. You know, truly Christ wants to transform each one of us into something beautiful. No matter your background, no matter your personality, no matter your disposition, in Jesus there is hope. Amen. Almonds and avocados, what do the two have in common? Hmm. Let's find out right now from our healthy friends at Loma Linda. With two-thirds of our population either overweight or obese, the emphasis tends to be on what you should not eat. Oh, man. However, when it comes to losing weight, instead, ask yourself, what should I eat? Obesity is a huge problem in America. It increases one's risk of heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, high blood pressure, cancer, and the list goes on. So let's focus on two foods that we should eat if we want to lose weight avocados and almonds. Researchers added half of an avocado to the subject's lunch meals and found that they felt fuller over a longer period of time and had less of a desire to eat. Not only that, but their insulin levels mm. decreased after the meal. A lot of people think that because avocados are high in fat, that they are fattening. But that is not necessarily so, because higher fat foods help you feel full you see, avocados contain monounsaturated fat. It's a healthy type of fat that our bodies need to reduce LDLs. That's the bad cholesterol in our blood. This fruit also contains 20 vitamins and minerals. And almonds have a similar effect. The high protein, high fat, and high fiber content in these nuts help us feel more full. 
In fact, the researcher found in a weight control program that those who ate almonds as a snack had longer and better sustained weight reduction than those in the popcorn group. The study also found that people do not gain weight by eating a handful of almonds every day. But more than losing weight, it's what these foods do to help combat the negative health effects of obesity. So how should we incorporate avocados and almonds into our daily diet? My recommendation would be about half an avocado. So to substitute that too for maybe some of the butter or the high fat cheese that is usually consumed at meal times. And for almonds, eat a handful a day. You can also substitute it for saturated fats like cheese and meat for added health benefits. And that liven up your diet by being creative with these foods. For example, instead of putting butter on your toast, top it with almond butter or avocado. You can even make a delicious avocado shake with almond milk. For a healthier take on dessert, make chocolate pudding with avocado instead of the dairy. Then top it with slivered almonds. There's your tip for the day on how you can live healthier, longer. What if I told you that there's hidden treasure all around you? Well, friends, it's true. <laughs> Let's dig into this concept now through an artistic journey on today's episode of Master Stroke. The hidden treasure was painted by James Tussaud. It's based on a story Jesus told. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Imagine the scene. Jethro must have cracked. He'd always been a hardworking, good husband and father, but now everything had changed. He put a big for sale sign on the house. The neighbours gather. What's happening? <laughs> His wife said, I've got no idea. Then he left. But soon he returned, beaming from ear to ear. It's all ours. The land is ours. What land? She said. The field I've been ploughing in. You sold everything to buy that piece of junk? Doesn't even have a house on it. You're even crazier than I thought. So he gathered his family. He told them how he bumped into a wooden box while he was ploughing, how it was full of jewels, gold, silver. I love how Tissot has this man completely stretched, how he's covering up his treasure so no one else will come and steal it from him. You see, Jethro knew of whoever owned the ground owns the riches. He knew that to buy this land would take everything he had. He then said to his family, as of this moment, we are worth more than our wildest dreams. So what does this story mean to us today? Firstly, to gain the treasure of heaven will take a complete surrender of all that you are and all that you have. But secondly, Jesus wants us to know that we are invaluable. Jesus has stretched himself out to give everything, even his own life to purchase this earth. Why? Because when Jesus looks at us, He doesn't see rough, stony, worthless failures. He sees His priceless gems. The key message, you are that treasure. Mm, friends, you see, you are an amazing treasure. If you want to share the hope of Jesus with others, share us with a friend or visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to see more. Yes, and check out our YouTube channel. Simply search for Wake Up With Hope and subscribe to keep up with each one of our episodes. We have to take a short break now, but when we return, we will have music and a morning devotional. Stay with us. Music is a powerful tool for praising God. It is a wonderful gift from God Himself. Psalm chapter 95 verse 1 says, 
Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout out loud to the rock of our salvation. You know, join us now as we praise Him through song this morning. If you're enjoying today's program like we are, please share it with your friends. Our website is hopetv.org slash wake up. And we have to take a short break now, but when we return, Pastor John Bradshaw from It Is Written will be sharing a thoughtful message from the Bible with us. Welcome back to our morning program. How are you enjoying our program this morning? We would love to hear from you. Please send us a message on our official Wake Up With Hope Facebook page and let us know. This morning, John Bradshaw from It Is Written is here with us to share a reflection from the Bible. It is really good to see you. God bless you today. I hope your day has started well. Let's take a moment to consider a thought from the Bible together. I want to tell you about an experience I had number of years ago, I was in Northern California standing in a parking lot with a friend. I looked up into the mountains to the east, or like right nearby, and I was alarmed. The mountain was on fire. Way up high, there was a red glow. I said to my friend, the mountain is on fire. Way up high, there is a red glow. And he looked up and he said, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, man, you're right. I said, what do we do? He said, well, the authorities will be alerted, no doubt. We're not the only people around here who, who, who've seen it. We chatted. We weren't worried, but the, the, the red 
in the mountains started to get a little closer. It looked like they were on fire. We thought, man, the, the fire is blazing and getting bigger. But we're not hearing a fire siren. We're not hearing any activity. We're not seeing anything. It was nighttime now, nighttime. And then it dawned on us. The mountains weren't on fire at all. That red glow was doing a strange thing. It wasn't flames. It was the aurora borealis, the northern lights, which are not viewed every day in Northern California, you understand. It's kind of a rare occurrence. I said, do you think that's the Northern Lights? He said, I think it is. Looking up, in the, up into the, whatever it was, the mountains, I suppose, not really the sky. I said, oh, I have to tell my wife. We've got to grab our baby boy. The boy was just a little fellow. He wasn't even a year old, but he wasn't going to miss this. And we jumped in the car. We put the car seat with the baby in the car. I asked my friend. I was unfamiliar with the area. This was near Oroville in Northern California, not very far from Paradise. And uh, I said, where should I drive? I want to get out in the country and and get a better look at this because the mountains are kind of in the way. He said, go this way, go that way. And we did. We drove out into the country. It was sort of a valley. And we saw these red lights. We leaped out of the car with holding my little boy. Thank the Lord. It was a hospitable time of year. And as we stood there at the side of the road by the car, these great big beams, these shafts of red light came knifing down through the valley near us. They came right by us, passing us slowly by. It was like the legs of some great, big, awkward, uncoordinated monster were walking down through the the, the valley. Most phenomenal thing I'd ever seen. Uh, It was like science fiction, but better. And I'm not any science fiction fan anyway. It was like special effects, but better. These were God's special effects. And we stood out there late at night, gazing into the sky, looking all around us, just amazed, jaws open, huh? gazing. We couldn't look away. Couldn't look away. Never forgot it. The light show ended just about as suddenly as it began. And we drove home just saying, wow, God just showed us something really spectacular. Many years later, About 20 years later, 19 maybe, my wife and I and our daughter, not our son, we were in Alaska. And we wondered while we were there in Alaska during spring break, beautiful Alaska, will we be able to see the northern lights? We went online and I don't know if it's some northern lights finder and it said, yes. It seems like the activity is going to be good over these few nights. And on this night, it's really going to be great. Well, on one evening, we looked across the maybe the water and we saw something that approximated or resembled a sort of a yellowy glow. We think that was the Northern Lights, but it was a pretty pale, pretty tame affair. It wasn't anything much. But we were waiting to go out late one night and see the real thing. So it was a Friday night. And we knew that this was going to be the night. We piled into the car. It was Alaska in March. It was colder than cold. We drove out into the countryside. I thought, let's get up on a mountain. You can't get on a mountain in Alaska. I mean, you never get to, you can't drive to the top of those things. Even though it wasn't a mountainy mountain, we'd have been still driving looking for the top of that. So, but by that time we were seeing white lights, white lights, beams of lights or shaft of lights shafts of light in the sky, in the clouds. Wow, that's pretty cool. But it's white light, kind of like someone's holding a big flashlight. We said, we need a better vantage point. We got down out of there and we drove towards Palmer, Alaska. Not all the way, but kind of getting over close towards Palmer. We found a little out of the way place, pulled over to the side of the road. Another car was there. We climbed up. Cold, man, cold. Wanted to take photographs of this, but the fingers were cold. We looked up into the sky and there was, it's like a green curtain being let down, a wavy green curtain or maybe a flag. And it was green for the most part and a little bit yellow. And we took our photos and we gazed into the sky and we looked at each other. We said, how cool is this? And we looked at God's special laser light show in the sky and we couldn't look away. It was phenomenal. The Bible describes itself as light. God said that His Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path in Psalm 119. 
And it says in the same psalm, God, open my eyes that I may behold or see wondrous things in your law. If you want it to be, the Bible can be a pretty boring book. Honestly, if you want it to be, Jesus was getting around doing his thing and the disciples were doing theirs, a bunch of kings and a whole lot of numbers and I don't know, sacrifices. If you want it to be, uh, if you want it to be. But if you want it to be, oh, the Bible is the most remarkable book in the world. There was Jesus, the divine Son of God, showing us what our Heavenly Father is actually like. There was Jesus opening the eyes of the blind, causing the lame to walk, bringing the dead back to life. Oh, this was Jesus, the disciples working miracles. Some of them had their problems. They learned from Jesus, this Jesus who gave his life so that they and we might live. You read the remarkable things that took place in the Old Testament, the stories concerning Elijah, and Elisha, who worked even more miracles than his predecessor, uh, given the accurate definition of the word, he wasn't really his predecessor, but the one who went before him, Elisha did more than Elijah in terms of amazing miracles, you understand. Fire down from the sky in Elijah's time. Dead people brought back to life in Elisha's time. And we're just scratching the surface. The creation story, the Exodus, the story of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, God guiding his people through the wilderness. The amazing promises that Jesus is one day going to come back. And you're wasting your time scrolling around on Facebook? I'm not telling you that that's all bad. Of course it's not. How much time are you making for the Word of God? You look into it. You won't be able to look away. Read the Bible. Feed on the Bible. I know for a fact that most people, even who go to church, don't regularly read their Bible. Of those that do read, they don't read it systematically. Are you reading to feed? Read to feed. Are you reading to grow? Are you reading to know the Lord? Are you letting the Word of God wash around inside your mind and change you from the inside out? Are you letting the Spirit of God fill you with His presence and thrill you with the great revelations that Scripture contains? I hope I get to see the Northern Lights again. Spectacular. Maybe the Southern Lights, the Aurora Australis. That'd be great. But if not, I know where to see the light. It's spectacular. You'll see things you can hardly believe. Take your Bible, open it up, look into it long and longingly. You won't be able to look away. Thank you, Pastor John, for those inspiring words. Amen. And friends, thank you for watching Wake Up With Hope today. Now, don't forget to visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to learn more about what we have going on. And be sure to tune in tomorrow. We will have music, a brand new episode of Reflections of Hope, and Faith for Today will share a devotional with us. We can't wait to see you tomorrow. And if you enjoyed today's message, friends, please visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides designed with you in mind. That's right. Again, that's hope.study. We have no doubt that you'll be very blessed and encouraged. And before we go, we have a Bible promise we want to share with you. It's found in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. It says, This is real love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Mm. What a beautiful reminder, friends, of God's amazing love for you and me. Take it with you today, remembering that God's love is far-reaching. Amen. We hope you have a wonderful Wednesday. Let's pray together. Oh, Father in heaven, thank you so much that your love is so amazing that we can know that there is a God in heaven who fully knows us, yet perfectly loves us. And today, Lord, we're going to take this hope in our hearts. We're going to carry it in our hearts throughout the day so we can remain faithful and close to you. Thank you for answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.